ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا انه من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله بلغ رسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة فتركنا على الحجة البيضاء اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله والتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون In the name of Allah the beneficent the merciful I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah and I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger. Dear brothers, dear sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa ta'ala wa barakatuh. Dear brothers and sisters, all of us have been witnessing the most recent series of events that have begun with the production of a movie against Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that went viral on, on YouTube and the internet culminating or triggering massive protests again you know in the Middle East and in many parts of the Muslim world some of which have become very violent some of which have become quite transgressing so to speak some of which have become very extreme no doubt your brothers and sisters these issues are not issues we can neglect nor pretend like we have nothing to do with, or sink our heads into the ground and essentially declare kind of a, an attitude of, of what can we do. These are serious issues, dear brothers and sisters, that we need to pay close attention to and examine, for nothing happens that is random in the plan of Allah Azza wa Jalla. There are many issues that these events raise. Make no mistake about it, dear brothers and sisters, all of us feel offended by the movie against Prophet Muhammad And this is no surprise. We've seen over and over again the attempts of bigots, and Islamophobes, etc. to offend the religious sensitivities of not only Muslims, but people of faith across the world. To demonize, to undermine, to spread propaganda, to attack and abuse. Make no mistake about it, dear brothers and sisters, these acts are to be denounced are to be repudiated, are to be disliked by us. We're human beings, and if we don't have emotions for our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and our faith, then we're dead people. But also make no mistake about it, dear brothers and sisters, and we all know that Alhamdulillah in our community in the United States and our organizations have come out and clearly denounced the senseless killings of diplomats and the US ambassador in Libya, and the radicalized reactions, the extremist reactions. Make no mistake about it, dear brothers and sisters, not for political expediency, but because it's the right thing to do, grounded in the ethics and the standards in the Quran and the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad the senseless acts and the wall protests that have gripped many regions of the Muslim world are absolutely wrong, absolutely un-Islamic. That killing innocent people, killing anyone, in the name of Islam, is the furthest thing from Islam, it has to be denounced. And it has to be protested. And you should be the first to do it before anybody else, not to please somebody, dear brothers and sisters, because it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. <coughs> dear brothers and sisters, as I said, I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal that such events are allowing us to reflect upon the meaning of these events. And what Allah expects out of us. Dear brothers and sisters, when we look and the senseless acts and the wall protests that have gripped many parts of the Middle East and beyond. Some of us, if not many, if not all, are disheartened and concerned. Isn't it true? Concerned that these uh, uh, acts of hostility, that this rage that is so manifest, that these excesses, these sensationalized excesses of people, ultimately harm Muslims in Islam. We're concerned about this. We're concerned that these sensationalized excesses, when they appear on television, they'll distort the image of Islam and reinforce many of the ignorant perceptions of people. Isn't it true? We're concerned. We worry about this. But here's the question for you and me, dear brothers and sisters. 
When we associate the perceptions of people with images on television, and we look, when we look closely at this and see that most people living in this country and in the West derive their perceptions from images on television, and make no mistake about it, dear brothers and sisters, if all they see on television is angry people, wall people, shouting and destroying things, setting up fires, and, and, and being hostile, excuse them for the perceptions that they have. Give them an excuse, for you will do the same if you've seen images like this. And we're disturbed about them as well. But if that's the only source of information they have, then you know who, who, whom we should blame? Ourselves. Blame ourselves, dear brothers and sisters, in this country, and in the West, that the only source of information that people have are images on television. We should not be upset with people, dear brothers and sisters, who are, taught, who, who, know, who are even committing the crimes. We should first and foremost be upset with ourselves and ask ourselves, what are we doing to change the perception of those people in this country and beyond? For they indeed, dear brothers and sisters, associate our faith with the behavior and the conduct of people that you see on television. So what are we doing? What are we doing to correct those perceptions? Dear brothers and sisters, how many of us bother to ask ourselves, what have I done? to educate anyone in my community, my neighbors, people in this country, about Prophet Muhammad And why we love him so much, and why we're offended when we see a slanderous attack on him in a movie. Do they know what he means to us? Absolutely not. Most people do not know. Do they even know we believe in Allah? A sister emailed me this morning and said that many of us are not even aware that most people in this country, their brothers and sisters, do not even know that Muslims believe in God. Do you ever think about this? Whose fault is it that most people in our community, our neighbors do not know we even believe in God, dear brothers and sisters? That is something, dear brothers and sisters, that brings us back to us right here, not others, not overseas, here, right here. That's the responsibility that we have, dear brothers and sisters. If we are to really change the perceptions of people, dear brothers and sisters, then we have to evaluate the behavior and the conduct and the role that we're playing right here to change the image of Islam. That's where people ultimately derive their information from, dear brothers and sisters, from the interactions, from learning and getting to know Muslims. But we Muslims, you know, you know where we're living. We're living in our bubble, we're living in isolation by and large, and we don't, we don't really engage others around us, dear brothers and sisters. Nor do we even have a sound understanding of the ethical standards of our faith. We tend to react with anger and emotions, and let alone dear brothers and sisters, or, for, or, 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 or rarely do we ever return back to really the ethical teachings of Prophet Muhammad and the Quran as we respond to events of these proportions. These are really serious events, dear brothers and sisters. Now, when we look at the character of Prophet Muhammad, and the ethical ideals of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu will glean right away what Allah, dear brothers and sisters, set as a standard for dealing with issues like we're seeing today. There is an answer, dear brothers and sisters. There's a model of behavior. We're not going to invent something new. If we claim to be Muslim, then the model is in the Quran and the tradition of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu If we claim to love the Prophet sallallahu and honor his legacy, then the best place to start is to try to emulate his behavior. To learn from his standards and the standards of the Quran, dear brothers and sisters. I'll present to you and I'll share with you, dear brothers and sisters, an example of those high ethical standards that Allah taught the Prophet And these are very relevant to our situation today. Unfortunately, we don't pay attention to them because we do not understand. We don't have sound knowledge, dear brothers and sisters. We don't want to struggle want to resort to easy means. Be angry, and tomorrow go back to sleep, so to speak. Struggle, dear brothers and sisters, requires time, effort, examination, being honest with ourselves. Listen to the words of Allah Azza wa Jal. And these are words that came, that came to console the Prophet and the community of the believers, not in Mecca, but in Medina. In Medina, dear brothers and sisters, when the state of Islam was being constructed. What does Allah tell them? In anticipation of a lot of abuse that they will be encountering. He says, 
or let the one fi amwalikum wa anfusikum. Excuse me. He says to the Prophet I'm going to warn you. I'm going to 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 remind you to counsel you before the events happen. He says you shall be tested and tried in your wealth and in yourselves. Let the one fi amwalikum wa anfusikum. ولا تسمعون من الذين أوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم والذين أشركوا أذى كثيرة. He says you shall. Allah is declaring a reality that is going to be happening to them. He says you're going to hear a lot of things from those who received the scriptures before you and the idolaters. What are you going to hear from them? He's telling them you're going to hear a lot of abuse. You're going to hear a lot of things that make you sad and grieve and make you angry. أذى كثيرة. Abusive things, slanderous things, hurtful things. So what is the course of action that Allah prescribes? What does He tell them to do? Be angry? Go out and shout? Protest it? No, dear brothers and sisters. Look at the prescription of Allah Azza wa Jal. He says, وَإِن تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ He says, the hardest thing is not for you to go and shout and retaliate. This is not exalted behavior. Not a standard from Allah Azza wa Jal. The standard of Allah and the course of action He prescribed for His Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and the nascent community of Muslims in Medina was what? وَإِن تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقِيهَا He says you have to A. Endure patiently. So you're hearing this abuse, you encounter these difficulties, you have to endure patiently. Refrain from being angry. Refrain from retaliation. Do not counter or meet the vile act with a vile act of your own. You can't do this. This is the heavenly standard. What the taqwa? And then he says, be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah. How many of us, dear brothers and sisters, when we hear ugly, obscene things against our faith, against Prophet Muhammad we subscribe to this formula right away. Endure patiently. We're grieving. We're not happy about it, but we endure it. What the taqwa? And then we remember Allah. We remember that everything is in the hands of Allah Azza wa Jalla. This is the course of action, dear brothers and sisters, so that people do not engage in what? Wild, uncalculated, angry, uh, 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 extreme behavior that ultimately harms them and harms people around them and harms creation. This is the course of action of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Do not reciprocate vile deeds with vile deeds. That's what he told Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now I want, to, I want you to think of the fruits of this. Whenever we're patient, dear brothers and sisters, we know we're not going to taste the fruit right away. That's why Allah says, He says, this is a manifestation. Your patience and your mindfulness of Allah is a manifestation of what? Great resolve. He's saying, subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not great resolve for you to be angry and to retaliate and to meet the vile deed with the vile deed of your own. This is not great resolve. He says the great resolve is for you to be patient and to remember Allah Azza wa and to continue to do the good deeds. That is great resolve. So the Prophet and the community did that. When did they get the fruit? Several years later. Listen to what happens in Mecca, dear brothers and sisters. What happens to Mecca? A bloodless opening of Mecca. Where the, the harshest enemies of the Prophet themselves embrace the faith. Isn't that extraordinary? Ikram ibn Abu Jahl enters into the fold of Islam, an enemy of Allah. Amr ibn al-As. Khalid ibn walid Wow. How is it, dear brothers and sisters, that years later, the Prophet ﷺ would enter into Mecca without fighting, and people would embrace Islam afwaja in waves. Waves, dear brothers and sisters. Why was that the case? It was because of the course of action and the behavior of Prophet Muhammad ﷺ in the community. No retaliation. No retaliation, for he was sent to set a higher standard. So when people came to experience the conduct of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in the community, they loved the faith. They couldn't resist it. So they entered into it in waves, dear brothers and sisters. I ask you, dear brothers and sisters, when people look at the behavior of Muslims globally, what images do they have of Islam? Does it inspire them? Does it empower them? Do they feel like, wow, this faith brings me solutions? Wow, these are the images of people who are very... Very, very, very kind in giving. Or are the images of extreme, violent, and angry people? It's not a representation of reality. We know this. But these are the images and the perceptions they have. I'm asking us, dear brothers and sisters, are we following the behavior of Prophet Muhammad in responding to events like this? 
or are we the furthest away from it? Or are we just good at condemning others for being angry while not examining what we're doing here in our communities to change the perception of people around us? We ask Allah Azza wa to illuminate our hearts with sound understanding of the Qur'an and the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah alayhi wa Dear brothers and sisters, once again, in dealing with and in responding to the events of the day, we as Muslims, if we claim to be believers in Allah Azza and followers and lovers of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his tradition, we cannot simply resort to, to reactive behavior and deeds that are the furthest from the character of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the name of protecting his legacy. I'm afraid that many of us are defiling his legacy, dear brothers and sisters, because we're resorting to our whims and desires and merely reacting to things and being angry. Instead of understanding that the formula of Allah Azza wa Jalla requires a lot more from us, requires a lot more for us. <coughs> Listen once again to the Quran when it speaks to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When Allah is counseling the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, imagine the weight of his the, and the burden of the message on him, dear brothers and sisters. The Prophet was commanded to deliver the light of Allah and the guidance to humanity. He was so burdened, why? He was concerned that people will not listen. He cared about humanity so much, he wanted everybody in general. And Allah said, I sent you to people to bring them from what? Darkness to light. From the bank of, of, of entering into the hellfire to put him in Jannah. That's his mission. So he was concerned, people will not listen. So Allah kept sending, sending him counsel, you know, counseling words, healing reminders, commands to keep him strong, to allow him to understand what he should be doing in responding to the events that he encountered and the abuse. So listen here what he also tells him, how to deal with these issues. He says to him, Oh my Prophet, you're going to be dealing with people who mock you. You're going to be dealing with people who hurt you, who abuse you. What should you do? He says, first, He says, the most fundamental thing, the most essential thing you need to concern yourself with is to remind publicly. Go out and remind and educate. That's your mission. Don't worry about them. They're going to waste your time and emotions. He says, your job is to remind. Dear brothers and sisters, how many of us are looking at this as our job? My job is to go educate and remind. My family, my own, Educate myself, my family, my community, my neighbors. Educate, pronounce, declare with your words and your behavior, whatever you can do. That's the message to the Prophet. He says, Leave them, let them go. Don't concern yourself with the mushrikeen, with the idolaters, those who abuse you. We're going to suffice you against who? Those who mock you. Dear brothers and sisters, Allah is sufficient for all of us. He says, I'll take care of retaliating against them. Don't worry about that. That's not your job. Not to be angry and retaliate. That is the job of Allah Azza wa And then later in the verse, what does he say? Look at the intimate words of Allah, dear brothers and sisters, who tells us, I know in your heart you're grieving. He says to the Prophet, I know that you are in pain in your chest, that your chest is constricted because of what they say. Isn't that, not, isn't that how, how we feel, dear brothers and sisters, when we see attacks on the Prophet ﷺ and on our faith? We feel constriction in our hearts. Allah knows about it. Allah is aware of it. Allah knows about your pain. But what is He expecting of you to do? So He tells His Prophet ﷺ to counsel him, as, 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 as an instruction from the heavens, I said, بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِ So I wanted to do the following, he says to him, Glorify your Lord. Glorify your Lord and remember Allah, be mindful of Allah in these times. وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ Continue to prostrate to your Lord. Worship Allah Azza wa Jalla. Seek out Allah. Reach out to the heavens with your hands. Remember Allah. Recite His name. Read the Qur'an. He'll soothe you. He'll heal you. But you need Allah to deal with anything, dear brothers and sisters. You need Allah to enlighten your mind and your heart so that you're not angry. So that your emotions are not overtaking you. So that whatever you do pleases Allah. So He tells us, Prophet I want you to struggle to remember me. I want you to continue to do that. 
to continue to do that and prostrate, what would Rabbaka Hatta Ikik al And continue to deepen your devotion to Allah and worship Him until death comes to you. That's the prescription to the Prophet. Go out and proclaim, remind people, remind people and be patient and prostrate to your Lord. But what kind of a message did He declare, dear brothers and sisters? How did He deal with people? Allah tells us in the Quran, dear brothers and sisters, وَمَا أَفْسَلْنَاكَ إِذَا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ The Prophet ﷺ, dear brothers and sisters, was not just somebody who acted mercifully. He was mercy. He was the embodiment of mercy itself. That's what people experience with Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. I'm asking you, is that what people experience with us? Rahma, Embodiment of mercy? Dear brothers and sisters, the Prophet ﷺ brought a message that was transcendent. It empowered people. <coughs> Through the Prophet ﷺ and his character, people saw joy. I'm asking you, dear brothers and sisters, the Prophet ﷺ, we're told by the companions that he used to always smile. Smile all the time. I'm asking you, is his burden less than our burden? Was he kind of uh, 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 taking up a job at the time that was so light, that at the end of the day he says, I'm done, and I can smile now? No, dear brothers and sisters. His burden was heavier than any burden than any of us can have, yet he had a smile on his face. When people looked at him, they saw hope, glad tidings, something that empowers them. They saw solutions for their problems, they saw healing. Aisha was said, used to say about the Prophet ﷺ, their brothers and sisters, when she was asked about him, she says he was never foul ever in his behavior or speech. You'll never catch the Prophet ﷺ saying anything bad or behaving in any foul way. He was never loud in the marketplace. He never sought revenge. Never. Never, dear brothers and sisters. But he always forgave and was pardoning. That's what his wife said about him. So when people experience this, dear brothers and sisters, they felt uplifted to the extent where his enemies, years later, would come and embrace the faith. Because they were empowered by that faith. They saw something different. I ask you, are people seeing something different about this faith? Our faith, Islam, through our behavior, through how we speak and conduct ourselves? Or do they merely derive their understanding and perception from television, from the protests that you see? Isn't that our responsibility here? Dear brothers and sisters, in the Battle of Bahad, just to illustrate to you the humanity and the mercy of Prophet Muhammad how much he loved creation and cared for them. In the, in the midst of the greatest of difficulties, not merely just a movie out there to, to offend them, for us. In the middle of battle of Uhud, he was severely injured. In his forehead, in his lip, in his, in his, in his teeth. Bleeding, dear brothers and sisters. What was the Prophet ﷺ doing? He was drying up the blood on his body so that it doesn't fall on the ground. You know why? He says, so as he's drying up his blood, severely injured, they're aiming to kill him. He says, if the blood falls on the ground, the severe punishment of Allah will descend on these enemies right away. He's afraid that the punishment of Allah will come down onto them. Even though they're attacking and about to kill him. So he's afraid that the blood, his blood, his sacred blood will touch the ground. So he's drying it up quickly. So the companions were very, very uh, uh, concerned for the Prophet and it, it, it was heavy on them to see him in that condition. So they went and asked him, in the middle of the battle, the battle, O Prophet of Allah, why didn't you make dua against him? Why didn't you make dua against him? He says, I was not sent as somebody who damns others. I was sent as a caller and a mercy. Allah oh Allah, in the middle of the battle, why he's bleeding. Oh Allah, forgive my people. They're ignorant. They're ignorant. How many of us, their brothers and sisters, when we see a hamis on our faith, slander, propaganda, we say, oh Allah, guide them. For they're ignorant. Some, sure, are deliberate in their behavior. We know this, dear brothers and sisters. But their, their faith is with Allah Azza wa Jalla. We cannot control that. Allah says, leave that to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Worry about what you're doing. So, dear brothers and sisters, how many of us, I ask in conclusion, as we evaluate these current events, I'm not talking about generalities and the behavior of Muslims around the world but are asking themselves, me and you, what are we doing? To, 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 to live up to the ideals, the lofty ideals of Prophet Muhammad to really honor his sunnah. For we have reduced the sunnah, dear brothers and sisters, to rituals. That's all we've reduced it to. We're so occupied with the rituals of the faith and not the essence of the faith. Not that the rituals are not important. 
But all we care about, dear brothers and sisters, is our appearance, perhaps. Not understanding the Prophet ﷺ came to perfect our characters, to make us godly, to uplift the humanity, dear brothers and sisters. If people do not see that in us, do not blame them for the perceptions that they have. For we're not being a solution for them. We're not being relevant to them. We're not somebody who expresses mercy. When they do see that in us, dear brothers and sisters, rest assured, just as Allah brought the people of Mecca in waves into the fold of the faith, out of love for the faith, not to please somebody, because it meant something different for them. It impacted them. Rest assured, dear brothers and sisters, the fruits will be yielded, and you'll taste them. But you have to endure patiently. Remember your Lord. Be mindful of Him. He knows about your pain. But what He's expecting us, dear brothers and sisters, is not to return the vile deed with a vile deed, just as some have done, unfortunately. To be patient, not to retaliate, not to be hateful. For hate breeds hate, dear brothers and sisters. And hatred is not, is not a quality of the believer, somebody who attaches himself to the Lord of the heavens and the earth, who is the most merciful of their brothers and sisters, has to have a different heart, bigger heart. The Prophet came to beautify us, dear brothers and sisters, beautify our minds, use a key, beautify our tongues, beautify our emotions and hearts, humanize us. How many of us, dear brothers and sisters, care so much for other people who are not believing in Allah Azza that we're concerned, we cry for them, we make God for them. Instead of merely uttering words, kind of, to express our rage and anger at them. Make God for the people, the Muslims overseas, who are ignorant and foolish. Make God for people, dear brothers and sisters, that Allah guides them and enlightens them. And make God to Allah that He uses us as tools, as beacons of light, that people can look at and see beauty, see mercy, in the hope that, inshallah, that becomes the association with the faith of Islam. When we do that, dear brothers and sisters, inshallah change will occur. And the perceptions will change. But that is in the hands of Allah Azza wa We ask Allah Azza wa to use us as tools of righteousness on this earth. We ask Allah Azza wa to make us agents of mercy on this earth. We ask Allah Azza wa to guide us to the straight path. We ask Allah Azza wa to excuse us for our mistakes and wrongdoings. We ask Allah Azza wa to guide all of those who do not know Him to the faith. We ask Allah Azza wa to forgive us for our errors, sins, and mistakes. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to envelop us with His mercy. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to increase us in our piety, our consciousness of Him, and our devotion to Him, and our knowledge of Him. Allah maghfir lana wa rahamna wa afu anna wa tawalla amrana wa ahsan khalasana wa akhtim bil baqiyat salihat a'malana. Allah maghfir lana wa rahmatik yuglina biha an rahmatin wa siwa. Allah mihdina ila khayr al-a'mal ya Allah. Alhimna rushdana. الهمنا رشدنا وحفظنا يا رب العالمين من شرور أنفسنا ومن شر الشيطان الرجيم ومن شر كل دابة أنت آخر بناصيتها وادخلنا برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين وصل لهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأقم الصلاة